Happy Monday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hollywood Squares. Once again, I am Pete Pardo, your host. See you tranquilly. This is a rant, okay? Another rant, part two of last week's rant. They had concert experiences. You guys love part one so much, we decided we have to do part two. So we got Ryan Scow, Chris Allen, Nick Franco. Say hello, everybody. What up? Hello, everybody. Greetings. So uh, to continue on from last week, so basically these are concerts that we have been to that either the band or band sucked or the whole experience of the night sucked or the, uh, you know, getting there sucked, got too drunk, passed out, got puked on, uh, knew the concert was going to blow, it was even worse than we expected, whatever, whatever the event, whatever the reason, uh, just a disappointing evening at a, at a concert. That's what it's all about. So uh, I don't remember who we had to start last week. So you know what, Chris Allo, you're going to start first today, followed by okay. Ryan, followed by Nick, followed by myself. So Chris, go for it. All right. Uh, I can't believe this was 15 years ago. Uh, August 20th, 2005. Uh, I was in San Bernardino, California. Um, back then I was writing for like Metal Edge and, and uh, Circus and Pit and all these magazines. Roadrunner Records was coming out with this record called Roadrunner United. So the, they flew me out to California to see the last night of the OzFest. Uh, I'd already seen it twice. The headliners were Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden. And I was like, yeah. They were like, we'll fly out, you know, interview these bands, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, awesome. And I get to see, you know, Sabbath and Maiden, two of my favorite bands for the millionth time. Awesome. And uh, little did anybody know that right from the get-go, from like the first note of Iron Maiden's set, uh, they were getting pelted by eggs and tomatoes, and they were being spit on, and their sound was being cut out, and it was horrendous. I had an all access pass, so I couldn't get any closer. Uh, so I was literally in front of the stage watching <laughs> arguably the greatest heavy metal band of all time get spit on, um, get pelted with eggs, uh, literally, I mean, spit, like sliding down Bruce Dickinson's face. They kept cutting the sound on Maiden probably like four or five times. Like, you could feel the uneasiness in the crowd. 50,000 people were, you could just feel the tension because the audience was definitely miserable over watching Maiden get fucked with. And I thought a riot was going to break out, and I thought I was not going to make it out alive. Thankfully, there was no riot. Maiden played their whole set, um, but the sound kept coming in and out. You know, they, they did their, their thing. They held their heads up high. They walked off stage. Sharon Osbourne immediately comes out and says, Iron Maiden is great, but Bruce Dickinson is a prick. And as soon as she said that, the audience drowned her out. She dropped the microphone, started to cry, and ran off the stage. Thankfully, there was no riot, but it was a horrible, horrible thing to see. Like, like it made me nauseous watching it. It was disgusting. And, um, you know, what, what more can you say? It was just horrendous. The only good part was it was absolute heavy metal history. And I was there front center. This is a pretty infamous show. I have heard, read a lot about this. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was horrible. Horrible. So where was the spit and the, and the eggs coming from? The crowd or behind the stage? or No, they had, um, so there was the stage. And then they had a decent sized pit. But that was like VIPs only. So, um, you know, I saw Sharon Osbourne and Kelly Osbourne backstage, um, but nobody knew it at the time. But she was giving eggs and tomatoes to people. Uh, she, you know, I saw an interview where she said uh, she was finding Spanish uh, heavy metal kids and giving them free tickets and giving them pit passes, but supplying them with eggs as long as they would hurl it at Maiden. Supposedly, because you guys remember, OzFest used to have a ton of bands. Supposedly, um, some of the bands, some of the opening bands were goaded into throwing shit at Maiden too. But I mean, I didn't see anybody. And I, like, I know I was on the bus with Dino Cazares from Fear Factory and Rob Flynn from Machine Head, because those were like the two main guys. On the <laughs> two of them and the, that guy, Matt from Trivium. And like the three of them were like, they couldn't, but they were like, what planet are we on? This is, this is nuts. 
Uh, but it was a horrible, horrible, you know, experience. Yeah, it's not. And I was, dude, I was really scared. Like, legitimately, the, I think the only time in the however many concerts I've been to in the last, you know, whatever it is, 35 years, where I'm like, holy shit, like, a riot's going to break out, and I might not make it out of here. Damn. Well, that's a real low point yes. in heavy metal history. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So, that was uh, All right, Ryan, you're up. What do you got? All right, so uh, I'm going to say about 10, 11 years ago, uh, at the chance of a kid, yeah, I saw Exodus and the other band, I think was either Immolation or Riding Christ. Uh, Nick might remember. Uh, but anyways, during Exodus' set, I had a couple beers in me. wasn't too much. Still, when I like to go in the pit, so I went in the pit for a little while. You know, not crazy, and it's Exodus. It's an appropriate band for it. And they, you know, of course, they closed with a Strike of the Beast. And towards the end of the set, before they played that, um, you know, I'm in the pit doing whatever. And unbeknownst to me, somebody who was wearing a ring, don't know who it was to this day, just blasted me in the face as hard as they could. Knocked oh. me out cold. Like, just out, out cold. I blinked, and I was like, 10 seconds went by. I get up. Uh, I look at somebody. I point to my face, and this person's like, oh, yeah. I wipe my hand on my forehead. It's just red with blood. And fortunately, my friend uh, Rich was there, who a little bit of a survival of sky. She was like, run to the car. I have a full kit. So I ended up running out to my car, uh, bandaging my head up like freaking Rambo. Uh, I come back in, I have like an eye patch on, my whole head's covered in gauze, and I ended up watching the rest of the set. And uh, after the show, I walked outside, and the band was sitting there, and the uh, singer at the time, Rob Dukes, is like, please tell me that happened during our set. And I'm like, yeah, man, someone blasted me in the face, and he gave me a big hug, and he's like, that's so fucking awesome. Not that I got punched, but like, you know, he's like, he's like, ah, I love when crazy violent shit happens during our shows. So... <laughs> It made his night at least. And, you know, they put on a good show and it wasn't it, no scars or anything, but man, that fucking hurt getting punched in the Oof. face. <laughs> so, did did uh, you find, did you find the guy? Never knew. It's just some random person just saw me coming by. Maybe I bumped into them. You know, obviously I'm not too light. So I could have knocked him, knocked the beer at him. I don't know. And he's like, fuck this guy. And just poof, drilled me. It was like, it was, it was not an accidental, like, oh, right. you're it was definitely a like intentional, like really hard punch. And it sucked a lot. Ryan, yes. it, it, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Waited all these years to tell me. <laughs> tell you what no way. Uh, but, all right, Nick, uh, you're yeah. up. That was it. All right. Um, so my compared to these last two stories, I feel like mine is really more of a just a gripe instead of a horror show. Um, but back in I think 2016. Blind Guardian played uh, at Webster Hall with Gravedigger. Um, every time Blind Guardian, they're a German, um, your fans are probably pretty familiar with them. Uh, power metal, speed metal, hybrid. Um, it's a big deal when they play over here. They, they don't come over to the United States very often. And it's, you know, something you look forward to. And it's something different than what Webster Hall usually puts out. But on that night, um, Blind Guardian is playing through their set. And then all of a sudden, uh, Hansi, their singer, you know, in his German accent, tells everybody, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we're being told we have to wrap this up a little sooner. We can't play a full uh, encore because the nightclub has to start right after, you know, the DJ brainless dance music garbage that they play all the time, you know, that doesn't require anything or anybody traveling from, you know, Germany to uh, – to play and I just remember being really really disappointed in that reality that they had to finish up at like 10 30 or something ridiculous to make room for something that could wait another you know 40 minutes while everybody's ecstasy kicks in you know what I mean like right. just, just not cool man not cool you're paying good money the band wants to play their whole set so that's my first gripe that has happened to me numerous times over the years oh sure. yeah same here thought, yeah. Yeah. New York City's famous for that quite yeah. a few of it. Yeah, I, I you remember, know, um, BB Kings used to pull that shit all the time. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's right. I was gonna say the one that I definitely remember. They only had to cut one song, but I saw uh, Black Sabbath on the Headless Cross tour mm. in New York City in 1989. Wow. And they had they had they had to wrap it up a few minutes early, you know, which the show the Sabbath show was ending at 11 o'clock at night, but immediately playing the Palladium that night was Samantha Fox, and they had to, so they had to get all the Sabbath fans out. And then all the Samantha Fox fans in. So, I might have thought about that one. Yeah. I, I, listen, I thought about it, you know. 
She was a big deal at that time, right? She was huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, she was huge. She got me through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So my first choice here, uh, also at the Chance in Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, August 28th, 1987. So this is going back a ways. The wow. one and only time that I got to see one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Gary Moore. I believe it was on the Wild Frontier Tour. And I was still going to college. So I was in SUNY New Paltz. I probably went from New Paltz to Poughkeepsie that night. And my then girlfriend at the time and I got pretty loaded before the show. And uh, I remember the place was packed. I think it was his first ever appearance at the Chance or in, in the area, or whatever. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And my girlfriend got really drunk, oh. got really sick. And I had to deal with her back and forth, back and forth to the car all night while she was out in the parking lot. Ugh unloading right and i probably missed half the show and i also was pretty wasted as well and i honestly don't really remember much of the show at all and that's like one of your heroes that you had that opportunity that one opportunity to see and you really don't have any any good memories of the night at all other than vomit (laughs) you know and it wasn't me obviously but the fact that i was you know and it's funny because there were a couple times where i just i left her in the car went back inside and this was back in the day where you can kind of go in and out of the chance i was gonna i was gonna ask you that that yeah because you can't do that that anymore yeah Uh you can't do so uh but yeah so that sucked and that's uh, left you know real bad taste in my mouth because i love gary so much i miss him and that was the only time and wow no real memories at all to speak of that night that's terrible yeah yeah what are you gonna do all right chris back to you all right well mine's not as bad it's kind of bad though um september 9th 2017 I'm a huge Danzig fan, and it was uh, Danzig and Corrosion and Conformity, and uh, this was like the first Danzig tour after he had done the first uh, Misfits reunion uh, reunion shows. And uh, so I, I went to the uh, went to the show in Jersey, and it was at the um, the Wellmont Theater in Montclair, New Jersey. And nice it's cool. kind of a, it's, it's a nice a theater. theater. Yeah, but um, they have a small. I'm old, so I got to sit in the seats. You know, because the bottom, the, the floor is all standing. So you can buy the seats, but it's a small section. It's right behind the soundboard, and it's like more than double the price. Uh, so, but I did it because I'm a huge fan. So I get, uh, I get two tickets for, for, for me and the missus. We go to the show, and I get, I'm getting texts from two different friends of mine. They're like, holy shit, dude. I ran into Jerry only on the street. I'm like, what? Uh, Jerry only is the bass player uh, from the Misfits, who, you know, is the, orig- the only original member besides, besides Glenn Danzig. So I'm like, wow, that's fucking crazy, man. I'm like, you know, so now we're, we're texting back and forth. I got a buddy who's in the, in the upper, upper balcony. Like, all these texts are going back. Holy crap, this is going to be great. You know, Jerry only is going to get on stage uh, and do some, a Misfits song with, with Glenn, which would be a really rare thing. Well, that didn't happen. But to make matters worse... The seats that I had that I paid double for me and the missus to have this awesome view right behind the soundboard, right before Danzig comes on, who steps behind the soundboard blocking my way to view the stage? But Jerry only of the misfits. He's a big so dude. I'm like, holy shit, like this guy's <laughs> blocking my view. Like I love this guy's band, but like at the same time, I'm like, dude, you're you're blocking my way. So I, a couple times I had to politely tap him on the shoulder and uh, it was just an awkward, awkward scene. At one point, people started coming up and taking pictures. So somebody actually snapped a picture of Jerry standing at the soundboard and I'm standing here like this, <laughs> I'm miserable. And somebody sent that picture to my friend, Karen, who then sent it back to me. And she's like, look at that look on your face. I go, I know, I'm so fucking bummed. I paid 125 bucks a ticket to look at the back of Jerry Only's head. <laughs> it's like, Jerry, I love you, but get the fuck out of my way. Right? Get up so on stage. Fi- <laughs> finally, like the third time, he, he finally did move out of the way. And I did, uh, <laughs> my wife was wearing, because I'd seen the Misfits reunion the year before, she was wearing the sweatshirt. So I, I gave it to him. He signed it. He was super cool. Um, and so I didn't miss the entire show, but you know, it was a weird, fucked up circumstance. And um, yeah, that was that was my number two. Good story. All right, Ryan. 
Uh, so this one is a, it was a good show. Uh, Nick was there again. It was a Maryland Death Fest a couple of years ago when uh, it was the second time they had Bolt Thrower. They had Bolt Thrower in 2009, and it's a rare occurrence for Bolt Thrower to play the U.S. They've broken them now. So this ended up being the last time they played. They played outside the venue in a large tent, and it was Memorial Day weekend, Baltimore. Uh, the tent, it was capacity. It was probably five, 600 people. There's probably well over 1,500 people in there. Wow. And it was pouring rain outside, and it was just a damp, hot, super humid weather. And I, both were kicked ass. They were heavy as shit. They sounded great. They played everything you want to hear. The sound was awesome. But that was the most crowded, packed. Like, I can deal with crowds. I can deal with, you know, people sweating, pouring beer on me, mosh, but none of that bothers me. But this is the first time I've ever been in a concert. Like, I think I'm going to pass out. Like, it is – it has to be 115 in here, like 10,000% humidity. And wow. afterwards, uh, I've talked to a couple people. They're like, yeah, dude, I had to step outside until, like, a drenching downpour. So it wasn't any better uh, because I just couldn't – like, if I stood in there, like, I thought I was going to, like, die. It was so fucking hot. I don't know how the band played the whole time. I guess they had more air up on stage. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not missing a moment of their set. So I suffered the whole thing. Just like I could have lifted my feet off the ground and floated. It was so packed. Like that's how tight the bodies were together. You know, and they played for probably an hour or so. So that was definitely an endurance fest. And that's the kind of the perfect band for that too, because it's just like suffocatingly heavy death metal. So it's perfect to be like having like a wall of humans just crushing you, you know. But uh, that tent could have been a little bigger that they uh, rented for the uh, occasion for sure. Yeah, that something was... that like really hot sweaty humid concerts way too many people that's tough to deal with yeah. even if even though you're loving the music and you're just mm -hmm. like oh my god it's like i can't move i can't breathe and just everybody's like slimy skin all over mine including mm -hmm. my own right yeah it's yeah I, yeah I I like, a little bit's cool but there's there's a breaking point for sure yeah, yeah 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 the pouring rain in there that just adds that extra dampness and water on the ground oh, like, oh. Shit, that. nick were you were at that too you were there right I was. And um, yeah, that was uh, just that was like ridiculous. you described it, man. It was claustrophobic as hell in there. And I remember I had been uh, drinking that night. And, and after the show, I, I snuck out of the side of the tent and I stood in the rain like um, Shawshank Redemption. Like the end of that. <laughs> I was, I, your arms up, just trying. Yeah, to... yeah. And then I got rained on like crazy. And then what saved me that night was I had a trunk full of clementines, those stupid little oranges. <laughs> Oh my God! Greatest thing I ever did in my life was just sucking down these clementines. I actually met the someone. Clementines. Yeah, like who the random shit? I don't know. And uh, but it re rehydrated me and brought me back to life. I met a, a guy that was in the crowd. He was from California. He came. He saw the clementines. He had seen me, and he was like, um, was like you uh, know, oh, let me have some of those. And now we're like really good friends. So, both our cool. clementines, humidity, heavy metal. That's how you meet people. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> is, that your story? is that your story, Nick? Oh, no, no. Is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. That's my it. turn, though. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll see you in MDF and raise you in MDF. I was going to say something else, but this reminded me, and I can make this my, my uh, story. Um, I, I want to say it was the next year. I don't think it was the same year as uh, Bolt Thrower, <laughs> but I uh, was getting wrecked throughout the day, and the, the the black metal band uh shooter was playing from norway it's my hat here and they, i mean you probably never even heard of them they're amazing they never play over here and then uh, morbid angel was playing as well and they had um david vincent still it was the good morbid angel lineup to me and i was very much looking forward to that but i did not plan the day very well it was getting wrecked and wrecked and wrecked somebody decided it would be a good idea to go get our faces painted with corpse paint they were doing that, like these girls would paint your face. You know, I was in that level of drunk that I thought that was a good <laughs> idea. And I remember, you at the time. I remember sitting there getting my face painted, and while she was doing it, just going, oh, boy, oh, no, we're in a bad zone right now. And I spent the rest of the night, like, curled up in a ball, um, and I missed Shooter, and I missed uh, Morbid Angel, and I hated myself after that. I wow. did get to see uh, Shooter a couple years later, made up for it. It was great. But at the time, I was so mad. And kids out there listening, <laughs> don't do this. It's not worth it. Like like Pete was saying, when you get so drunk, you miss the bands you paid to see. It's mm -hmm. not worth it. Plan your day accordingly because you don't yeah. want to miss that European band at a fest. That was a great Morbid Angel set. I, I saw I – I missed Shooter, but I saw that Morbid Angel set, and that was uh, 
since Dave Vint that when he was back in the band for a couple of years, that yeah. was the best. So, uh, I know. A little salt in the wound there. Thank you. <laughs> I deserve one. <laughs> Yeah. It's one thing to have fun at a concert, but man, it's like, yeah, it's, you got to learn your limitations, right? It's like, and it's, yep. we've all done it. We've all done oh, it. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely done that. I had, a, I had a personal rule that um, only band I, I always vowed to never drink at was Black Sabbath. Mm. And, uh, I, one show I did drink at, but I seen Sabbath, I think like 48 times. So the other 47, I remember everything, but the, but yeah, I just never would drink at a, at a Sabbath show because I was like, I don't want to get too messed up and, you know, forget something. Or, you know, yeah. the worst thing is, you guys know, sometimes, the, you know, it takes you 10 minutes to walk to the bathroom and then you get to wait online for the bathroom. Oh, yeah. It's back. Mm -hmm. and you could miss like four songs. Yeah. Easily. Yep. Yep. I've been, I've been there. wearing a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, what's it. Richard Christie from uh, Iced Earth uh, does yep. that. That's right. That's right. I've also gone to see, like, for instance, Iron Maiden. I've seen twice on the same tour. One night's a drinking night, and the next night's a dead sober night. Okay. So, that's so a good that idea. I remember everything because I'm out of well, my mind. You've learned that. your lessons, though. You learned your lesson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My next story 1992, July 18th, Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Guns N' Roses, Metallica, and Faith No More. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, I, you know, this is one of those shows. By 92, I was already starting to jump off the Metallica train. Uh, but my then girlfriend, this is a different one from the other one, uh, was a huge Guns N' Roses fan. I, I didn't like them then, but I was like, I, li I dug Faith No More, and I was like, all right, I'll go see Metallica. Giant Stadium, why not? It's a thing to do. Faith No More were great. They were really good. Uh, that was the classic lineup. Uh, Metallica were actually really good that day. Um, but man, goes Guns N' Roses were well. Specifically, Axl Rose was probably the biggest douchebag out of any rock star I have ever seen ever in all the shows I've gone to all these years. I mean, this guy. First of all, they came out like an hour and a half late. Okay, so you got like what seventy thousand people in this place. It was right. in the middle of the summer. It was hot as hell. So they come on late. He comes out and he's just pissed off from the get-go. He's shouting at the road crew. He's cursing at the fans. People are throwing shit on the stage. He's just pissing off everybody. And they sucked. They were sloppy. He sang like shit. You know, Slash is okay. I always kind of like Slash. But, but uh, it just ruined the whole day for me. And I insisted, like halfway through the set, I was like, I've had enough of this. We're out of here. She wasn't happy because, of course, that's her favorite band. Oh, Axel, 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 right? But uh, but he was just a complete ass, complete ass. And it, it, it was probably at that point, at that moment, where I said, I can't stand this band, and I've hated them ever since. I wasn't really a fan before I saw that show, and I was even less of a fan afterwards. In fact, that fan is stretching it. Uh, I just I lost, I totally lost respect for them and him especially. And it's been a kind of hate relationship ever since. Yeah. Everything they say about this guy yeah. is correct. He was just, I mean, he was just being like a total douche to everybody. Fans, road crew, his bandmates, everybody. It's, just, it's not what you do. Yeah. I, don't know, I, I don't know how loaded he was or the band was. I don't know. Don't care. But, uh, you know, you pay good money to go see these bigger, big, you know, football stadium shows. And yeah, that's, not, that's not what headliners do, man. Not at all disgusting behavior yeah terrible so all right chris back to you all right mine, mine's a short quick one uh just a show i absolutely hated i know on the last video you know we were kind of debating like okay well um you know do you do you take the train or you know do you drive yourself well this this one time was the the third option which you know hindsight's 2020 was your friend drives and you jump in the car with him so it's uh, October 16th, 2017, and it's uh, Zach Sabbath at the Chance in Poughkeepsie. Uh, now, I'm not the biggest Zach uh, Wild fan, but I am a huge Black Sabbath fan. It's a band that changed my life. So going into this, I kind of figured, okay, it's going to be Zach doing his, you know, squealing pinch harmonics all night. But, you know, he's got a good band. He's got Blasco uh, on bass and um, what's his name? Joe Castillo from Danzig on, on drums. and. You know, it'd be cool. We'll have a couple beers. The chance is literally 12 minutes from my house. So it'll be a good time. Uh, and so we went, and 
the show, I absolutely hated it. Uh, the two things that drove me absolutely up a fucking wall was Zach Wilde had these pieces, big pieces of construction paper. They were 24 by 36 pieces of construction paper. And he had to have the lyrics handwritten in magic marker. And he, he had it, its own little stand and he had this big thing and I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, you've been in Ozzy's band for 30 years and you don't know, know the words no. Black Sabbath song? Black Sabbath lyrics. But you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Jesus, That's man. He, cl he claims to be the biggest Sabbath fan on the face he's of the earth. He's full of shit because in 88, I remember him doing interviews where he's like, oh, I didn't even know Black Sabbath, man. I was into the Allman Brothers. That's a whole nother story. He's like a wrestling thing. You got to rewrite history. But anyway, the other thing that absolutely, like I wanted to kill myself was he would get to the, to the awesome Tony Iommi guitar solo. And instead of the, you know, you know, 45 second solo in Supernaut or the awesome 63 second solo in Iron Man, it would be Zach Wilde just fucking doodling and squealing his guitars <laughs> for like eight minutes. They only did 13 songs that night, but it was a two hour show because it was like an hour of jamming and guitar solos, which I absolutely hate. I would have gone home probably two or three songs in, but my buddies drove. Uh, so I was stuck. stuck. I was stuck. stuck. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so um, I absolutely hated it. And Zach Sabbath sucks. The band is good. God bless them. But what they're doing, if you're going to be a Black Sabbath tribute band, play, play Black Sabbath songs. You know, play the fucking you, solos. Was, know play the, the solos. Fuck. Play the solos the way they are. Know the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Know your shit, man. And now Zach Sabbath is coming out with the whole, you know, Black Sabbath album re-recorded, which is Ugh. ridiculous. No, I, yeah. fuck that. Garbage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right. Brian, you're up. All right, so this one, uh, speaking of the topic of drinking too much and youthful indiscretion and being an idiot, uh, probably at 2003 or four, there was a festival in Asbury Park. Uh, I think it was, I know, uh, the Mewborg Year played, Moonspell, Ibo Negative, Morbid Angel. Dancing. That was a, yeah. that was a huge, it huge was a great, lineup. great lineup, good fest. So it was one, I, I was pretty young at the time. I was like 20, 22, maybe. I forget exactly what year it was. And, uh, We've got a hotel room nearby. Now I have rules. Like, if I go to a fest, I get my own hotel room. I don't invite people that I know are going to be up all night snorting coke or being stupid. You know, I want to get my sleep and enjoy the show. If I want to drink too much, that's my fault. Well, we invited some people over. Like, ah, oh, hey, you, you seem like cool guys. They come over. Let's hang out. You know, come crash in our room. So, of course, we hooked up with some people that, you know, it turns out you do coke, they don't sleep all night. So they were up all fucking night partying. We ended up being up all night partying. So the next day. I think I slept all the way through typo negative set and I missed all morbid angel set, just like sleeping, like standing up. I was such a fucking zombie, you know, just a uh, stupid shit you do when you're young. Now I'd be like, yeah. Nope, my own room. I'm sleeping. You guys can fuck off party over there. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll hook up later. We'll do whatever you drink You do whatever you want. But you know, I need, I need my quiet place to sleep at night without people screaming and shouting. But these are the lessons you'll learn growing up. So True. That's right. We all do. The second day of the fest sucked because I was so tired. I'd say I want to sleep so bad. There was nowhere to sleep because we had already checked out of the room. So there was like I could sleep in the car, but that was I think my buddy drove, so I didn't even have a car to sleep in. So it just it sucked, you know. Yeah, it's my own fault. Yeah, it happens. Good, but it happens. It happens. Good fest though. Other than other than um, oh, unbelievable fest. That lineup was insane. It was. It was really good. That was and like a European a more, uh, fest. less stupid. I probably would have enjoyed it more, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Nick, you're up. So my last one is um I, I can't remember, I think it was around uh it was a long time ago. I, I can't find the exact year uh year. Uh somebody said, Oh, you know, Jeff Tate is playing um the chance, which is also like with Chris close to me too. And uh I was like, Oh, okay, what what is it? It's a Jeff Tate uh cabaret show. Oh, I remember that. I'm like, okay, uh whatever, Jeff Tate, right? Queens right. Yeah, we're good. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know what I watched. It, it was self-indulgent, bizarrely trying to be theatrical. There was a couple songs that were, you know, good. He played a lot of songs I didn't really even know. And it just felt like a giant letdown. Um, he was trying real hard, you know, 
but my goodness, it just was a bad night. And I don't have many. yet. It was actually hard for me to come up with a lot of bad experiences. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty positive person overall. And I tend to give my artists leeway. But, man, that was just a bad idea from the word go. I don't even know what was going on. I actually had tickets to that yeah. and blew it off. <laughs> I don't remember why, but I was like, and then I heard about it the next day. I'm like, thank God I didn't go to that. I would have rather done my laundry and folded socks at home. <laughs> yeah, I remember I got, on, I got on the guest list, and then the more I heard about it, I'm like, you know, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to pass. Yeah. I thought yeah. blew it off, too. I saw, the once I saw Cabaret, I'm like, yeah. No, nah, I don't think so. Nope, nope. Swing and a miss, big time. <sighs> All right, my last one here. Uh, this was truly a bad one. Uh, Terminal 5, New York City, December 7, 2008. In Flames was the headliner. All right, this was right around the time where In Flames really starting to take a nosedive, right? But I was like, ah, I still kind of dig them, whatever. Uh, go there, and I think there was – two opening bands i don't even remember who the other one was but the main opener was five finger death punch <laughs> wow <laughs> you saw them they were awful can i tell you how awful there were like five people in the audience who thought they were like the greatest thing ever and they're up in the front and they're like yeah they're jumping up and down and they're trying to mosh and people are like these guys just blow i never i can't remember the last time i saw such disinterest from a crowd before and I was just like, these, these guys are just not good. I'm like, well, hopefully their set is not too long because I'm looking forward to seeing In Flames. And then In Flames just bored the crap out of me because wow. it seemed like their whole set was like, we are now a metalcore band. We're popular. Yay. And I was just like, this sucks. This is not the In Flames I grew to love. And it was and such I a massive disappointment. And that you guys know that Terminal Five place. It's at like oh. in the middle of nowhere in New York I, City. Gosh. Like, and not only that, there's there's like no good sight lines. Like, nowhere. You can't you can't get a good nowhere. view anywhere. Nowhere. You hate that place. Oh, it's got like what like two three levels, and it's like yes. you know yeah they they won't let you go there. You can't go nope. here. If you go in the back by the bar, you can't, can't stand see shit. here. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's terrible, terrible venue. Oh, really, really bad. It was like, you know, right, right before the holidays with December, it was like freezing cold outside. And then to get back to the train, you got to walk like five miles before you can like get on a, on a train or anything. It's just it did, the whole night just absolutely sucked. And that was the night where I said in flames, I'm done with you. Yeah, absolutely done. That was it. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. that's my last story. <laughs> we got four minutes. Anybody got a last one? We could probably throw one more out there. Anybody got anything? I'm trying to think. Um, I got one from a long time ago when Sam Ale from Switzerland played with Dima Borgir and um, oh, I, I saw I saw that tour. That was the that was at the Wetlands, Wetlands. in New York City in nineteen ninety something. Ninety something, yeah. I was yeah, there. and I'm it was Sam Ale. Tell the story, Nick. I like the story. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah, it's it's similar <laughs> to yours. It's similar to yours, Ryan. It made me think of it. Is that uh, I was um enjoying myself there was not a lot of people there especially in those days and it was a contingent of um tall european fellows at the show and uh and then there was us upstate guys and there was a, a lot of latin american guys and the latin american guys and and i think they were polish or russian i don't want to say you know i don't know they you know there's a couple of factions there didn't maybe didn't synthesize so well and something happened somebody got into a, a tiff with with somebody in my group and a beer bottle flew or something flew through the air and it was aimed at my friend, but it hit me right in the head. Oh yeah. And Samuel was just coming out on stage and I had blood streaming down my face oh. being like 19 years old, whatever. I probably would do this now too. I just exactly. stood there like this with blood, you know, with the, the horns up like this with blood streaming down my face. And um, the other people at the show thought I was the coolest person in the world. So I was, you know, not caring that I was bleeding <laughs> and uh, nothing more, no more violence happened. I just kind of dealt with it. And um, I just remember Sam Ale played Baphomet's Throne and it was this, this great, really great song of theirs from the old days. And um, it was actually a positive experience, but I did get my face split open, my head. So, it's a good story. Fun. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Good, good times, you know. <laughs> I, I think I only saw one show there. Um, I think it was there. I saw Beneath the Massacre, I think at that place. 
And I was like the only journalist there, right? I was, I was on the list and I was like, all right, so I'm up front there playing it. It was in one of the side rooms and like the stage was like maybe five inches off tall, right off the ground. And I'm in the front, I'm taking pictures. And all of a sudden the guitar player who's like going off all over the place, he like whips his guitar around, the head of his guitar smacks me in the head, knocks me out, I'm laying on the floor, people are moshing all over, running, trampling over me and everything. That lifted me up, pulled me to the side by the bar, and I was like, holy cow, I felt like I was unconscious for like about 30 seconds. I mean, the guy like nailed me so hard, I had a big knot in the side of my head. I'm like, you know what? I am done taking pictures for the night. That's it. Oh yeah, that, that place was so fucking tiny. Oh, God, was, yeah. Yeah. That best show I ever saw there was uh, Christian, Angel Corpse, Immortal, and Satyricon. I was wow. there. That I was, was there. Too. That was a great show. That was, was a great show. Yeah. That, there were so many people, like, you couldn't get in any trouble because everybody was still packed in. That was one of those, why is this show here? This is like a closet. <laughs> yeah, that place kind of sucks. So I think we're out of time, guys, but this was fun. Yeah. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And for Chris Allo, Nick Franco, Ryan Scow, I am Pete Pardo. This is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. We'll come back up. Coming back at you tonight with another revenge, another rant. Boy, I can't speak anymore. We'll see you guys shortly. Take care. Have a good one. Bye bye. Thanks, guys.